It is Wednesday, October 14, 2020. I'm here with Dr. Anthony today. Uh, really a uh, good show today. Dr. Anthony just got a delivery right here today from FedEx, uh, from SD Bullion, and he's going to share with all of us what he ordered, and we're going to talk about why he ordered it and why we believe every one of you should be doing the same thing. Now, there's a lot of great places out there you can order gold and silver from. Uh, I order primarily from SD Bullion. This package is from SD Bullion. Yes. Uh, and, and look, I don't care where you get your gold or your silver from, the pawn shop, the coin shop, uh, some dealer online. Just make sure it's reputable. Uh, but I do believe, and I'm not here to give anybody financial advice, I do believe that these are the two most undervalued assets on planet Earth, and I believe that they're two of the most important assets on planet Earth. Uh, I have a link down below, SD Bullion, check it out. But again, buy it from whoever you feel comfortable with. But let's talk about why you bought a box of gold and silver. Um, I was reading an article today, and we're, we're going into this election. And I think that this election is 100% bullish for gold and silver. Anthony? No matter how it goes, gold and silver has to go up, no matter who wins. Because either way, if the stock market is being manipulated or the gold and silver market is being manipulated, uh, it's slowly releasing pressure of how it's like been, they've been holding in this. and the. They just can't hold it anymore. Right. At some point, like I always refer to it as a wild animal, it's going to break out of the cage, uncontrollable at that point. But one thing we know, whoever is elected, there is going to be massive money printing coming uh, to America. It's never left, but it's going to go on steroids. And that is going to entail inflation running wild in America. And look, every time you go to the store, you, you all see the inflation trade deficits out of control they're going to be more out of control this government is getting bigger not smaller and it is going to spend more money than ever with a printing press and this roller coaster cannot just go on forever so they're going to keep doing what they're doing and we're just going to keep building our assets and it's going to go on until it doesn't but um you know, every time I watch these markets, and today they were down a little bit, no, nothing big, but you, you know, when we see the amount of unemployment uh, hemorrhaging here in America, wage cuts, um, uh, all the uncertainty, uh, the bailouts uh, that are coming, industries uh, like leisure, hospitality, airlines, you name it, everyone needs a bailout. Tip, half of this country, uh, the households need a bailout. but. These markets don't care about anything other than stimulus, and that's another reason why I'm so bullish uh, about gold and silver. Stimulus now is more important than earnings. Stimulus is more important than you. It's more important um, than the real economy that we deal with every day. It's more important than the unemployment. It's more important than all of these retail closings, all the mom and pop, small, medium businesses. Um, the only thing that matters now is how much the Fed can artificially inject into these markets. And another great reason to order a box of precious metal. At the end of this roller coaster is a very abrupt eruption. We have small tremblings, a quaking, a little hint of a tremor. But when the big one hits, this is where you want to be. I, I mean, I think. Most people watching this video realize that these markets are so overvalued that all this, all, all this stimulus, all this money printing, all this quantitative easing, helicopter money, 0% uh, interest rates, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, uh, is going to make the bubbles even bigger. You know what it does? All this does is, the question is, is your bank too big to fail? And that's a great point. Uh, third quarter EPS for uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, down 42 cents, more than 50% from the 92 cents a year ago. Third quarter net income for Wells Fargo was $2 billion down, 56% from the $4.6 billion a year ago. You know, things are going to get a lot worse for banks, banks like Wells Fargo. Um, we're going to see huge charge-offs and delinquencies 
uh, from customer forbearance and payment deferral programs. Wells Fargo has still $23.5 billion in unpaid principal balance of modified customer loans in deferral as of September 30th, 2020. You must ask yourself, is your bank safe? Do you think the banking system is safe? I don't know any bank that is literally too big to fail. So I'm going to become my own central bank. Uh, we got more numbers. Uh, the banks are, are in much worse shape than most people think. Bank of America third quarter revenues tumbled by 11% to $20.3 billion, down from $22.8 billion a year ago. EPS uh, at 51 cents below last year's 56 cents. Loan demand also weakened, uh, weakened at uh, Bank of America. A clear confirmation that the U.S. economy is very sick. Uh, and when you read stuff like this, and these aren't the only two banks, uh, there were others, but these are some of the biggest banks in the world, and they're having big trouble. So when I see um, these banks, whether they're closed for a day or two or two weeks or three weeks or whatever, ATMs also, a lot of people in the comments reported that their banks were closed, but also ATMs uh, closed. Um, this makes me feel very, very uncomfortable, well, doctor. It's all, there's so many distractions going on, but you're noticing what really matters. The people with the money are not making themselves accessible to the people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they can blame it on an infection or whatever their reasons are, but the real issue is money isn't there like it's supposed So to. if I need to get to the bank and get uh, $200 out or $500 out, or I got to go to my ATM to get money to uh, buy groceries for the week, what if I can't do that? What if something happens and we see bank runs in America? I know a lot of people think that that can't happen. Somebody wrote me the other day and says, uh, oh, this isn't Venezuela. And I almost like couldn't believe it because we are going right down the same trail that Venezuela went yep. down. What they're going to do is your bank account, you can't uh, take money out of it. You won't be able to withdraw cash, but they'll have money that you can use on your card. Or if you insist to withdraw all your money from the bank, they'll give you a prepaid um, mm -hmm. debit card of some sort. What happens if the bank doesn't allow you to pull any money out like we saw in Cyprus uh, what if we, a bank run like we saw in Lebanon, bank runs that we've seen throughout history, uh, dollar gets into trouble, it's worthless, banks get into trouble. We, we, we saw what happened beginning last summer in the repo market. What if the banks get into big trouble and they have to shut their doors and you can't access your money? Then you can't access your money and you're going to wait until the next stimulus comes. And that could be, I mean, um, we're probably not even going to see uh, stimulus this year now. So, um, again, now you're more reliant and dependent on the government instead of having a box like this. Um, if I can say one thing to everybody, uh, keep a very limited amount of cash in your bank. You need to be your own bank, your own central bank. And when we're talking uh, gold and silver, we're talking physical gold, physical silver. And the last place you want to store it is in your bank. The bank could be overrun, there could be riots, there could be uh, corruption at the bank. Which that's, that's the scariest thing is the corruption because if they get into trouble, guess whose money they're going after? Guess whose assets they're going to go after? If that box is sitting in a safety deposit box at a bank and they close down, they're taking it. Uh, these are the biggest criminal cartels in the world. Um, let's talk about small business uh, here in America. Um, what do you see the future of small business in the next 12 months? People who are able to answer a very specific question for customers will continue to be successful. But people, businesses that are out there uh, that are not very good at any one thing are going to be the ones to fail. Small business, the, the backbone of America employing nearly half of all private uh, sector workers. Uh, it's so important and we're seeing so many, at least in our area, closing up, uh, especially in leisure and hospitality. It's been hit so hard. 37% uh, of small business that is in leisure and hospitality is uh, reporting no transaction data. Nearly 25% of all small businesses remained closed in the U.S. Yelp reported that restaurants marked closed on their platform 61% are closed permanently. What I mean, 
what are these people going to do? I mean, this is uh, such a crisis. And, you know, we've got uh, Fox Business on. We had CNBC on earlier. Nobody's talking about this crisis. Nobody's talking about the massive unemployment. Nobody's yeah. talking about 61 of these uh, uh, percent of uh, U.S. restaurants closing permanently. They're not talking about small, medium businesses closing every day. They're not talking uh, about what people are going to do this Christmas without any stimulus. The, and and the problem is, it's like all we want to do is paper over it with more bailouts, more stimulus. When are we going to stop uh, just giving all this free money out and start putting opportunity out there, start creating new business, manufacturing, giving people opportunity instead of a $1,200 check? It could be a really long time. So in the meantime, do what you can do. And I don't have an answer you know what to do um, because I mean it is I can't even imagine people with kids yeah um, we can't control all of these things out there in the big world us the small guy the small investor we cannot really influence except through voting uh, what goes on out there so right. you have to pull in where you're able to make a difference and start doing things. Yeah, I mean, you, you basically have to be your own asset and have a skill set, and it's going to be rough. There, there's no, there are going to be so many challenges uh, facing the average American in the next 12 months. Remember, we haven't even seen the ramifications from all these closures yet of, of all this small, medium business, and even large. I mean, these large resort chains out here are running at 25%. Um, and, and so even they're feeling it, but they'll get a bailout before the average American does. But uh, article today in the Hedge, how malls die slowly than all at once. 300 Class B malls, those are your mid-sized malls in the U.S. are dying a slow death. And what we have to realize is, you know, it doesn't just affect those stores in the mall. It affects everything around the mall, inside and out. Uh, other, you know, uh, uh, retail uh, stores, it, it affects the outlying restaurants, uh, employment, taxation, how, you know, cities get a lot of uh, their tax revenue from retail, from these shopping malls. Uh, what happens when all this uh, taxation for these cities dries up? How do they pay for police, fire, garbage pickups, etc.? cetera, um, street lights? I mean, just think, like, this whole thing is so... Uh, intertwined and complicated, so many moving parts yes. with this economy. People just think, well, the mall's going to go out of business. You know, it's obsolete. It's you know, it's old. Uh, that's just the way it is. I'm going to buy everything on on Amazon. But you don't realize how this is going to affect your local economy um, because those malls not just employ people in the mall, but the outlying area. Twenty-five thousand stores could close in the U.S. this year and those would be mostly in malls and those are employees the small businesses mm -hmm. that have closed are entrepreneurs and yeah. they can easily pop back up but now they're 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 where are they going to get the capital when their credit's been destroyed and now we're heading into a depression banks aren't going to loan money like they used to do they're tightening up and now uh you have three stores that just went bankrupt uh, do you think a, a bank is going to say, uh, yeah, Anthony, let me loan you a million dollars? So, I mean, again, there, there's a lot of moving parts here, and the effects are going to be felt for years. If you think this economy is going to turn around next year in 2021 and everything is going to come roaring back and we're going to live in this perfect uh, economic utopia, uh, and there's people that believe that, uh, you are delusional. Here's another one that kind of, this is actually close to you, bankrupt restaurant chains hand their keys to lenders. California Pizza Kitchen, which is literally a block or two from your office, canceled its auction after no worthy bidders came forward to buy the chain. So they are turning the keys back over to the lender uh, or lenders. Ruby Tuesday started its bankruptcy process uh, and they're planning to hand over their keys to their lenders. Um, how long is this going to go on? I mean, is anything going to be left open? It just seems like... Uh, I, I mean, that's not a small restaurant. I mean, they're everywhere, uh, and but they those are people. You know, those big corporate yeah. restaurants and chains. I think they lend themselves to more of uh, corruption, or there's more leakage due to more fingers in the. Well, they borrowed a lot of money cheap too. A lot of these yeah. uh, companies borrowed cheap and money, and they never expected to. And this. they never expected for a, a, a rainy day like this. Now, let's talk about this: soaring food costs and producer prices higher in September. Uh, you, you, 
I have a hard time when people tell me that there's no inflation. Uh, people will say I'm being negative, it's doom and gloom. But uh, I don't know if people, if these people have looked at their grocery bill. Maybe they're extremely wealthy, and this is too negative for them because uh, you, you know they obviously have an endless supply of money, and they maybe don't don't feel the pain like most people do. But I'm very aware of, of grocery store prices because I go every week, and every week things get more expensive. Um, you can look at um, health insurance, medical costs. Uh, look at the price of rent, look at the price of a car. Uh, and, and so I don't see how people can say that there's no inflation and this is having no negative effect on people's lives. It's just how slow can they turn up the flame so that people don't notice. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And I think people are beginning to, I, I think for the most part, many people are beginning to notice it now. Uh, another article here in The Hedge, more than half of all Americans plan to stockpile food in other essentials uh, for the chaotic months ahead. So some people are uh, waking up and some people uh, are beginning to see what's happening. I think they can't ignore it any longer because they are going to the grocery store, they are feeding their kids, uh, they do have, uh, have have seen their health insurance costs skyrocket, uh, they went to the hospital, got a huge medical bill, uh, they had to take their kid to urgent care, and that's five hundred dollars right there. And they're going, "Wow, this stuff is is getting expensive. My car insurance is skyrocketing. Every, I mean, everything is getting so expensive. When I'm at, sitting at a restaurant and I see somebody with four kids, you, you know, it's like, wow, this this, I, I mean, it can be very very costly. And people, I, I think, are are you know, cannot ignore." the signs any longer because they're they're shopping they're going to the grocery store eventually something is going to give eventually the pressure will not be able to be held any longer mm -hmm. the bubbles will pop and then it's going to be bad and then you have the haves and have nots uh there's no redos there's no i'm going to start preparing uh there's no tomorrow uh you either have prepared or you have it and this is why it's so imperative uh to take every day as an opportunity, a, as a blessing to get out and prepare a little bit more. You know, you could go to the grocery store tonight, buy 10 cans of food and put that away. 10 cans of food a week. Uh, if you have um, uh, more, more um, uh, money, maybe you can put 20 or 30 cans of food away uh, if, if you have the means to do so. But there's always something you could be doing to uh, put the odds a little bit more in your favor. And that's, that's all you can do is put the odds in your favor. N nobody's immune from what's coming. Everybody's going to feel uh, some amount of pain. But what you want to do is kind of soften the blow when, when this economic trauma really uh, hits America. And if you're completely unprepared, you, you're going to be living in a nightmare. There's going to be so much fear and panic going through your body at that time that you're not going to make the best decisions for yourself and your family. And so uh, that's, a, that's a great point. This is why you want to get your body in the best physical shape that you can. Um, maybe eat a little bit better, uh, train a little bit more, get to the gym if, you, if your gym is open, go for that walk, uh, get out to, you know, to the range. Just you know, do something productive. Uh, sitting on the couch, eating a bag of chips, and I know that that's probably going to trigger some people, um, but that's what, why we're here, because we want to trigger people. Because even the people that will judge us, criticize us, call us names, um, that, that's fine. Um, if you have time to do that, wonderful. I don't. Uh, I have to work, uh, I make these videos, I have to prepare, I have to get to the gym, I have to go to the range and train. Um, I, I'm always trying to, to better myself in, in some way, whether it's spiritually, financially, or physically and mentally. And so, you know, some people have time to watch cartoons and, and you know, watch this channel and judge it. Um, but I feel really sorry for those people. If they actually have the time to do that, uh, and yet they're not prepared, they could be taking that time. You could be taking that time instead of judging people like us. You could be taking that time and preparing. But I understand, I know that these are the most unprepared people and that they're the most scared, paranoid people. And they think that by maybe judging us and calling us names that this won't happen. But unfortunately, this is reality. This is the real world and it's already begun. And so even the trolls, I worry more about the trolls and I'm praying for you guys because um, many of them have a very miserable life and it's going to be even more miserable uh, once 
this economy really implodes into a full-blown depression that's already started. We're only in the first, second inning, ladies and gentlemen, but even to the trolls, I worry the most about them because, look, um, it just shows that there's some people out there who still don't get it, who just don't want to see it. I, I think that they get it, but I think they're so scared and so unprepared that they just um, hope that it's not going to happen. And look, hope is not going to cash anybody's check. Hope is not going to save your life. Um, I t I'll tell you what will. Having food preparations, uh, having security, having financial assets, having some cash, having some medical supplies, having a trauma kit, having... Um, some uh, type of assets uh, that that you that you can perform that if you, like a skill set if you have a skill set you are an asset um, so that that's you know uh, what you're gonna need um, and these these people don't have any of that and so you know they go around and they just want to you know judge and criticize everybody else but. Um, I'm, I'm praying for you people. I really am because your life is going to be a nightmare. And I, and this isn't about I was right, you were wrong, or, or you know anything like that. Um, I don't have time, uh, you, you know, to to even play that game. Who's right? Who's wrong? What day it's going to happen? Uh, this or you know play the blame game. Uh, we can blame politicians, the government, the banks, all that. But at the end of the day. Um, you're going to look in the mirror and blame yourself if you did not prepare for what's coming. You're the only one who can save yourself. You're the only one. There's, if you're waiting for the cure, if you're waiting for the injection, if you're waiting for something to happen to make it okay, now's the time. You're the only one who can get yourself going. And you're the only one that can protect your family. And... God forbid uh, something bad happens to your family. Uh, this economy is uh, going to be relentless, and it doesn't care if, if your children are a week old, a month old, a year old, or 10 years old. It is going to victimize millions of people right here in the U.S. and billions of people across the globe. There's a reality that we're talking about, because you could be in your wonderland, but there's a real world out there. And welcome to the real world. So, um, and I know 98% of the people watching this video live in the real world. They understand it. I read the comments, and um, and they're very very concerned uh, with the direction all this is going in. I want to go over one last article here. PG and E may cut power to 162,000 Californians for days. And um, this is, you know, what was it, a couple years ago when one of their power lines supposedly uh, lit um, a massive forest fire up in Northern California, burning like millions of acres and, you know, killing uh, people and burning down houses. It was a complete disaster. Um, but we, because we don't clean up our mess out here with our forestry, so it's a big tinderbox. And so now it's getting a little windy. They're going to shut off the power for 162,000 people here in the state of California. Um, and, and that should raise a little concern to everybody else, too, that just with a flip of a switch, your power can be cut off. Now, there could be a, a natural disaster, like a fire or an earthquake, uh, and it could be cut off. But, but you know, we have man-made disasters, too. But you look at a company like PG&E, they can just flip a switch, and you, your power can be cut off for five days. How many people right now could survive five days with no power at their house? It'd be very, very, especially out here. It's 106 degrees here in October right now as I make this video. Um, could you imagine five days, no air conditioning, mm -hmm. no power, no refrigeration? What do you do? Yeah, you're going to be in the car. Where are you going to go? This, if uh, there's any blockages or reasons why people can't go, if all the stoplights are out too and everything, mm -hmm. there's congestion and traffic and everyone's panicking. Right. Hospitals no backed up. Yeah. Um, you're, you know, uh, but it, it just always, um, again, we put so much faith in a system that's very, very fragile and very, very controlled. Um, we're seeing uh, just a lot of uncertainty right now. Um, just think if your power went down. You know, we saw that, I think it was last summer in New York. Uh, power outages, but uh, you know people can be easily controlled. All they have to do is flip a switch and cut your power off. Uh, guess what? You're not charging your cell phone. You're not getting on your computer. Yeah. You're not going to open up your refrigerator. Um, you know the uh, your your water companies all run on electricity. They, your water could be shut down. Uh, this could change your life in the blink of an eye. But what if your power got shut off for two weeks? 
three weeks, four weeks, uh, you're gonna, you would have mass chaos uh, immediately. If you do this to a big city, three, three nights with no electricity, you're going to have full-on just chaos in the city of Los Angeles. Um, Chicago. Could you imagine if this happened to a big urban city for a week, five days, what we would see? The crime rates would skyrocket. Not that they already have it, but they would go nuclear. So uh, it, to me, it's another reminder of the importance of being uh, just an independent human being, being your own central bank, having your own preparations, um, being able to rely on yourself for food and water, necessity. This is something you can do. You can't do anything about them turning off the no. AC or the power to the whole state, but you can do something and be a little more prepared. You can put the odds in your favor beginning right now. Don't be one of the masses. The masses are going to lose real bad here, ladies and gentlemen. We're seeing, again, continued volatility in these markets. Um, we're seeing the fight against gold and silver. Uh, they're going to try to keep this dollar propped up as long as they can, but let's close with this. The dollar. I believe the dollar is going to come under extreme pressure. I believe that if the dollar isn't backed by gold at some point, the dollar is going to be ancient history. All fiat currencies have ended at zero. And all bubbles have popped. Um, and now we are sitting here. The, the dollar has lasted longer than anybody thought. It's um, uh, been probably the most... Um, influential currency that the planet Earth has ever seen, but it's going to have its day. And we've lost 97% of its purchasing power in the last 100 years. And to close, we have never seen bubbles like the bubbles we are seeing now. There are bubbles all over the place. And when one of these bubbles uh, pops, they're all going to pop. And this is kind of the scariest thing because Every, literally every country in the world now is printing money, hand over fist, printing presses running wild. Every bubble relies on the other bubble. Mm -hmm. when, in order to make a big cloud of bubble, not just one bubble, there's a bunch of small bubbles and they all prop each other up. And, you know, the, the, the bad thing here is, like, we've no, like, we're seeing bubbles all over the world. It, it's not just America. And why this depression is going to be the hardest hitting, longest lasting one is because the entire world is doing what America is doing. We're printing money to infinity. We have massive bubbles. The world has massive bubbles. Um, and the world has wealth inequality and opportunity inequality, just like America, but even worse. And so we have massive debt, massive inequality, um, and, and, and no opportunity. And, and, and what's the, the uh, common denominator? The, the very few people at the very top of the world, at the top of the pyramid, the handful of people, are getting all the breaks, all the bailouts, all the money, and all the wealth, while everybody here is fighting over the bone with no meat left on it. So it's going to be a, a treacherous time, not just in America, but the entire world, and you must be preparing. When you hold this, you begin to realize the value of real money versus that paper monopoly money known as the U.S. dollar. The dollar's lost 97% of its purchasing power in the last 100 years. But this, these metals, have maintained their value. And they're going to continue to do it. What you want to do is protect yourself by getting out of your paper and getting into hard assets. Become your own central bank. Metal will protect you better than paper because the paper has already lost so much of its value and it's continuing to lose it, where this is going to continue going up or at least staying stable. It will never, never go to zero.